Okay, Monday, Energy 808, the cutting edge. And wow, do we have a guest this morning. We'd love to have you on the show, Jay. Jay Griffin, he's the chair of the PUC. So nice to have you here. Glad to be here again. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Marco. Marco, why don't you make introduction, okay, on Jay? And, you, and remember, this is only a 28-minute uh, show. Yes, I'll try to keep my effusiveness under control here. Well, first of all, <laughs> fantastic to be back with Jay and Jay, my, my blood brothers from different mothers. And, yeah, it's, it's always such a treat to uh, get you, Jay and uh, Jenny, and hopefully Leo sometime into the studio as well to come and talk turkey and tofu with us here. And, uh, yes, Dr. James Griffin, known to his friends as Jay, uh, has been with the commission now for about two years, by, by my recollection, and uh, became chair uh, in the past months, and uh, the Gov couldn't have made a better choice. So, uh, uh, again, I'm just so pleased to have, uh, have you on the show, Jay, and thank you so much for joining us. So, Jay, you know, chair, I don't think we talked to you since before no, you were chair. I was reflecting on that before I came here. Yeah, so this is, this is an important moment for us. And, I, you know, I just wonder, I had my, my personal image was that there was, there was clouds there, and the clouds opened up. And a beam of light came down through the clouds, and then you would share. How, how was it? What happened that day? Uh, it was pretty, pretty simple. I got a phone call from the governor. <laughs> uh, and he said, uh, I'd like to designate you as chair. And um, things pretty much rolled from there. Uh, you know, it's been something that's been uh, discussed a little bit, but I think... Um, it was in the middle of the overall transition of the administration, so there are a lot of big, important decisions going on. Yeah, um, and that so was one of them. That you know, it happened at a good time and gave us some continuity as Randy's. Randy had retired at the end of the year, um, and so early in January, uh, the governor made the call, and then you know, what I want to talk about too. A few months later, he ultimately made the decision to fill Randy's vacancy mm. with Leo. And so, you know, one of the big changes is the new leadership, new composition of the commission. Um, I think we have a great team now. I'm proud to serve with my colleagues as well as our staff. Uh, but our kind of dedication and focus is still the same. We want to move the agenda forward and be an effective regulatory agency. So I think we're, we're no change there. But you have additional duties, responsibilities as the chair. What are they? Sure. They're... Pretty expansive, uh, ultimate executive management um, responsibility for the agency are, but I, I try to carry those out as a team, again, working with our, my fellow commissioners, as well as our senior management staff, uh, basically responsibility to represent us in the media, in particularly at the legislature with, with other stakeholders and government agencies, so big. A lot of time spent managing the legislative affairs uh, and, and a lot of time, you know, looking at our, our dollars and nickels, making sure we manage our budget. budget yeah. We do oversee a number of different programs, white energy program, but also a one call center for excavators. So I have to make sure those things are all going smoothly, too, and uh, the bills get paid. <laughs> Fair enough. It's like the uh, Chief Justice Supreme Court is a parallel. Uh, Similar. I don't know if I want to quite... Uh, no, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think beyond, you know, it's a big weight when you're a decision maker as a commissioner. It's a whole nother level of, of responsibility being the chair. Now, you know, we, we always wonder, um, you know, uh, both on the Supreme Court and the PUC, whether the chair has greater, greater weight somehow in the, in the, in the decision process. Is, is that true? Uh, one level, no. I mean, we all have equal votes in, in our decisions and orders. Uh, but I, I think there is a, uh, I mean, I know in my feeling, working with a chair before, you know, you, you do have some deference for when they want to set a direction, and particularly in their management of the organization, um, I think that we try to defer to the person responsible, give uh, give advice uh, via sounding board, but uh, so I think there is a little more. I mean, I think you get the ability, as I said, set direction and um, establish priorities. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, we're very much trying to do that collaboratively. Mm. And, and in that regard, I mean, I, I just wonder, uh, I'm sure you've thought about this, as the chair, perhaps you look further down the road. Perhaps you, you, are, you have to have a larger, a larger picture. You have to be in more of a planning, years ahead kind of. Am I right about that? Absolutely. I, mean, I think of it in two ways. You've got to think about how is organization, I mean, how are we going to be successful during my term? But in some sense, even more importantly, how are we setting up our successors to be successful also? And sure. so I think that, you know, that got to think about that in a lot of, particularly a lot of our uh, internal decision making uh, in the management of the organization, but, you know, as, as well as our you know, regulatory decisions. Well, you know, to me, one of, one of the big things in, in my legal life is always looking for decency. And you haven't changed at all. You're a decent guy. Oh, it hasn't, it hasn't gone to your head. a few more gray hairs in the past <laughs> okay, few months. Okay, but, but your shoulders are not yet hunched. <laughs> you don't seem to be carrying the weight of the world. You seem to be the same, you know, gentle, good-natured fellow that was here before, Jay. Well, I appreciate that, and I attribute that to our staff, who always amazing help, my colleagues. Uh, as well as my predecessors who set us up to be in this position. That being said, Marco, uh, let's talk about some cases and issues, can we, without, without going outside the bounds of this discussion yep. and uh, you know, staying away from stuff, stuff that is, you know, protected um, by ongoing uh, process. Um, so what's, I, I guess, uh, Marco, why don't you take the question about what's new uh, in terms of the, um, let's see, um, the prior, uh, oh, we covered that. Oh, who knew it? We should talk at least about how that fits in the larger framework. Uh, why don't you frame the question, Marco? Sure. So, as you, I'm sure, could expect, Jay, you know, Huho Nua has a particular interest uh, for me, and that is on uh, the Big Island where I live. Uh, and uh, as far as I understand, at this point, the 2017 decision. Uh, that the commission made to approve that power purchase agreement has now been formally, if I'm not mistaken, been remanded back to you and the commission, you and Jenny and Leo and the staff. Uh, our Supreme Court has made clear, from what I can tell, that the commission must not take into account greenhouse gases, climate change, and effects on environmental quality that this power plant would have if it were to go online. So what is got me thinking since it was announced by a five, uh, five to zero decision, how does a regulatory body, in this case the Hawaii PUC, or any regulatory body for that matter, how does a regulatory body operationalize these values as they were stated by our Supreme Court? How do they operationalize these values into the decision-making process, which you and your fellow commissioners will be engaged in, in order to come up with a decision? Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reserve the right to ask yeah. a follow-up. Uh, well, I think a couple of things. So as, as you know now, or as you know, the decision was formally remanded, I believe it was last week. The decision came down a few weeks ago. It was unanimous. Uh, so I think the com and and so the the our prior order has been vacated and remanded back to the commission for further proceedings, uh, consistent with and I think the fundamental uh, key and I'm going to misquote the statute. Uh, there's a section of our part of statute saying the commission needs to explicitly consider um, quantitatively or qualitatively. It gives and it gives a, a number of different factors. Uh, but one of them is greenhouse gas emissions. And so what we were um, you know, found is that our decision did not correctly do that. We've read the order carefully. Um, and I think pretty soon you'll see that we will reopen things and lay out how we think we can uh, meet the, the statutory requirement for uh, reviewing those factors. We've had a, a number of decisions, or I think a couple now um, where this has come up. And so we're, I think we're learning as we're going, I think is my honest answer. And we're gonna, when we reopen the proceeding, we'll lay out how we think um, we can review these issues uh, well within, you know, given the direction of the court and what the statute says. Uh, but I think that, you know, that 
order coming from the commission should be soon. I don't. I can't say much more at this moment. To, to respond and to indicate Correct. the path I mean, you will uh, follow. It was a unanimous decision. Was, we heard it loud and clear, and mm -hmm. um, we will carry forth as such. Was this a surprise? Okay. Oh. Uh, I don't know if I want to. I mean, I. we're going to, I mean, we've read it clearly, and we're going to, you know, follow exactly what the courts told us to do. So. That's my. Well, Jay, let me ask you. <laughs> uh, we were told that we're, you know, had not. So, or, you know, had not followed our own statute. So we will. Do you know, Jay, whether any commissions, any comparable bodies on the U.S. mainland, have already chewed on this particular set of issues in terms of quantitatively or qualitatively factoring in? clean air, greenhouse gases, environmental quality into some type of uh, decision-making framework. In other words, do, do, you, do you believe that you guys have any guide, any insight of this path already being walked by commissioners on the mainland? Where are you guys going to be walking new ground? You're reading my mind because uh, I'm getting <laughs> geared up for our uh, the NARUC is the National Association of Regulatory Commissioners. Uh, we meet three times a year. Next month, there's a meeting in Indianapolis, and that's the exact question I'm going to pose to my colleagues that uh, sit on the same subcommittee. Uh, to my, and, and I, my initial read on that is that uh, I'm not aware of another commission um, that goes through this kind of analysis, and it's pretty broad if you look at the statute on the types of decisions that uh, possibly covered. I'm not aware. Uh, but I can say that I've, we've been looking at, I mean, there are, there are, I mean, there, there is a pretty established body of analysis on how to look at greenhouse gas emissions from projects, particularly life cycle emissions. Uh, you know, it can get complicated, but that kind of analysis is, is, has been done uh, for a while now. But whether, how it factors into regulatory decision making not as aware of other places that um, I think we'll probably have to do it to the extent that we do. Mm, so that would be an important meeting for you, just to get a handle on what else is going on elsewhere. Yeah, it's always, uh, they're always great meetings, um, just to kind of pick the brains of your colleagues sitting in a similar position. Marco, can I ask uh, Jay a couple of questions on this? Well, let, let, if I could just follow up, and I'll, then I'll turn over to you, my friend Jay Fidel. Uh, my, my kind of cloudy crystal ball, Jay Griffin, uh, indicates that a decision on who will know is probably not going to be forthcoming until late this year or early next year, given, given all the factors involved. Do you think that's a more or less accurate uh, observation from my cloudy crystal ball? Uh, your crystal ball is cloudy, but it's probably better than mine. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I mean, uh, well, let me step that back for a second. You know, we can, there's certain, we have some ability to influence, I mean, we, we set the schedule, um, but there's parts of that that are out of our, uh, I mean, things that are, some aspects are out of our control. Uh, but it's, yeah, I think one aspect that is pretty clear is that we're going to need to hold, uh, we, would, we expect to hold an evidentiary hearing and those take time to gear up for and to receive the transcripts and issue a decision from. So I think- Would that know, be on this island, the hearing or hearings? I don't do think, think we have, uh, stay tuned, but I okay. think uh, what, or at least what I can say is I think we're um, cognizant of the fact of the communities where the projects take place. Um, but I mean, the other, Fact is that the evidentiary hearing, you know, it will be, you know, for the parties to the docket. It's not you know, the same as a, a public hearing per public se. Public hearing, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But I, I'll telegraph. I mean, I, I, I like I said, we're, um, yeah. I, I think one thing that I certainly heard loud and clear is I was being confirmed that uh, our, we don't want our commission to be Oahu or Honolulu centric. If, you know, we have a, a statewide impact and, you know, understand how particularly these, some of these projects affect local communities. Okay. 
Thank you. So this okay, is Jay. this is a, an environmentally oriented Supreme Court. I mean, uh, this is this is the court that that made TMT go back to the drawing boards. This is the court that stopped the super ferry. Um, I know that was a few years ago, but it's essentially the same court. And I wonder if you see in this decision uh, a further trend around environmental considerations, uh, a further trend to drill down on vague statues like this and, uh, or rel as you said, relatively vague statues like this and, and sort of refine them, uh, put more teeth into them, more specifics into them. As you said, we're all learning together on this. I mean, but is there a direction of the court, um, do you think, on this kind of issue? Uh, I probably I don't want to speculate too much on a different body. I think my message was a little different. This this particular decision was unanimous. Um, that so, tells you something. <laughs> uh, so I think it was uh, pretty clear where you know what you know it wasn't just a different. Well, yeah, right. Everyone everyone clearly saw that we had not followed our own statute. So that was so what we're taking in in the appeal. I guess it was an appeal from, uh, and the life of the land was involved as the appellant, and uh, uh, and then somebody had to represent uh, the the state, the state's interest, I guess, and that was the state attorney general, I suppose. Correct. Yeah, the AG's office represented. So, what us. was their position in, in opposition to? Uh, do, you, do you recall what they were arguing on this on this very point that the court hung the decision on? Yeah, I think what what was generally argued and was in in our earlier decision was that you know, by approving a renewable project, you know, we're furthering the renewable portfolio standards and by extension, um, that addresses a number of different environmental concerns. I'll probably misstate our own position, but I think that, that was the line of argument. And I think what the court came back and said is, well, your statute here is very specific on elements that your decision-making needs to follow. We did not have an explicit section of the decision disgusting greenhouse gas emissions and so you know we were in violation of our own statute but my my uh, my first reaction when i heard about this is well they're talking about a a provision in the opinion in your decision but that doesn't necessarily mean that you did not you guys did not consider the very same subject matter in reaching that decision so this is necessarily i mean if if i'm too close to uh, you know where you are these days. Well, I'll just say like, we we read we we take the decision. It was a very loud and clear message to us, and you know we're gonna go forward. You may have to take evidence. Oh yeah, I mean I think we definitely have to take evidence. Okay. I mean there will need there will we'll, uh, we'll have an opening order order reopening things. Describing what you're soon. gonna do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've been I. We, been thinking about it pretty hard. Yeah, sure. Cool. And 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 um, right now, the I mean, I say that the jury's out. You 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 can't say exactly how you're going to rule the next time. No, can't yeah. say that. That'll be interesting. M Marco, you want to follow that? Yes. Sure. Well, let's, let's uh, move on to uh, yeah. To, so it's, uh, no, I mean, no time to move on. <laughs> Energy eight oh eight will follow what happens. That's what I mean. Yeah. No, I think we understand the importance of the specific decision, the project on the Big Island, as well as the relevance of the decision you know, across a lot of other types of projects. But if you look at it, it the statute talks about um, rate making in general and capital improvements that utilities make. So it's an uh, important decision. Yeah, you got enough on your plate. The next uh, thing we want to ask you about is, uh, is PBR. Uh, Marco, let me ask you to frame that question, okay? Sure, so I'm looking at my crystal ball again, and uh, I'm seeing this image of there's no more important docket currently before the Public Utilities Commission of our wonderful state than the performance-based regulation docket. And I wanted to ask you, Jay Griffin, uh, kind of give us a, a brief update in terms of where we are uh, with this important docket, and uh, this is kind of a softball question of how important is it for you all and us all to get PBR right. Well, on this one, your crystal ball is is spot on. This is our number one priority. Uh, both, I, and I think there's a couple of dimensions to that. One is just the broad impact of of the things under consideration. 
and the you know the footprint of affecting all the different Hawaiian Electric companies, uh, as well as the complexity and the you know the, the complexity of the issues that are before us. So we we have devoted a little over a year now uh, to the phase one of that process, and that was intended to really revisit the existing regulatory framework broadly. Uh, we hosted three different workshops, uh, taking feedback from the parties. Our staff had produced uh, staff memos and reports prior to each one, write-ups. Uh, in early, early February, they produced a staff report summarizing phase one and laying out a proposed decision uh, framework for the commission. Uh, a little while ago, geez, about, I think it was about a month ago, time, time flies. Uh, we issued a decision order from the commission, uh, largely adopting the, most of the elements that were in that staff report. And we're going to spend what's now phase two working through the details. Uh, and it, we're, it, we'll have another decision forthcoming laying out the time frame for that. Uh, but I think I want to reiter reiterate a few things. One, you know, this we've invested a huge amount of our internal time and resources to supporting this, uh, and we've and we've needed to do that for the reasons that I stated, but also to make sure that this was a, a, a I want to say at least collaborative process among the stakeholders. There was a lot of concern that this would turn into a feeding frenzy, and it hasn't to date. And you know, we intend to continue to work in that environment. That's great. Out of respect for everyone involved in the, you know, the importance of, of this matter to the state. Uh, but we're also going to, you know, the, it, it, it is our number one priority to make sure that this continues to move along uh, in a consistent way. Uh, if it bogs down at the commission and leaves our regulatory framework in a highly uncertain place, you know, that's not in anyone's interest either. So we're going to continue to move in a deliberative way, um, but, you know, make sure things get the time and attention that they need. You That's know, the process part. I can, you know, delve into some of the highlights please. of the, yeah, the uh, phase one decision. And so what we, we identified a number of different areas of the existing regulatory framework that um, we're looking to make modifications to. One is the general, how should I, the general rate making approach. Uh, right now, utilities file rate cases every three years. Utility, uh, my electric companies are on a one, you know, each company is staggered by year. So year by year by year, we receive cases, uh, requests to increase rates from the three Hawaiian electric companies. These are huge undertakings. There's thousands of pages of evidence material. And we're bas they're, they're proposing to us what, it, what they think it costs for them to run their organization. And we review it carefully and issue a decision. Uh, this, the rate adjustment, rate setting uh, review of this would move to more of a formula-based approach where for five, I mean, basically we, we establish a certain level of allowed revenues and then those are adjusted annually by a formula. That's and, a lot easier. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> There's more certainty. I mean, yeah. once, once all of those pieces are agreed to, it's, it's supposed to be set in place. There's abilities to review and if not working correctly, make adjustments. But it's supposed to provide a more certain process and provide different types of incentives to the electric utility than it currently has, mm. particularly on this side to operate a little more cost efficiently. Mm. Uh, the second, and so this is a, I mean, this is big. There's, you know, billions of dollars. The one electric companies roughly have a little over one, well over $1 billion in total revenue a year. Um, so over, every, over several years, you know, there's some big dollars at stake. And so we've got to get that piece right. And then we've also the second major area for review are performance incentives and metrics above and beyond what the utility currently has. So we've identified a number of uh, outcomes and metrics to review and targeted three of them, uh, three new ones to develop performance incentives on. And you know, these are intended to be or two are carrots. One has uh, a carrot and a stick aspect to it. This is the really creative part. 
Uh, and I'm gonna. Oh, go ahead. I'm gonna speculate. I'm gonna speculate that uh, we are 12 to 24 months out before a finalized PBR will have been implemented with Hawaiian Electric. Does that sound, uh, according to your crystal ball, more or less accurate? You think 12 to 24 months out? I think we'll we're gonna weigh in on that shortly. We'll have we have, we have okay. a decision in the works. Uh, you know what we said in our our prior decision is in uh, roughly a month or so. We we're gonna lay out the time frame and schedule for phase two. Okay. Uh, but I, I guess what I will say we're we're not going to rush to uh, address these things. You know, a few weeks ago, um, the London Economics Report was rolled out by the Energy Office, and uh, there was some discussion about it. And I wonder if uh, that plays any role in P PBR. That's a, is that a separate docket? Is it a docket at all? Will it be involved in PDA, PBR? So, we, uh, you're right. I mean, the, the State Energy Office had, had included their report. It was at the direction of the legislature, and so that. That effort was funded you know, outside of our docket, and I, I'm in the process of reviewing. It was a lengthy report. Um, you know, I've read the, the key summary sections, but trying to get into all the detail, I'm still working my way through it. Uh, but there was a, you know, a major focus on performance-based regulation for the investor-owned utilities, and I think they generally supported that as the preferred approach. Um, but where, you know, what the energy office does with it from now is one question and, you know, they're, they're not a party to the performance-based regulation docket mm. now, but I think you know, there's different ways that we can take notice of that effort. Um, but I'm not clear what they plan to do is follow-up work now. Fair enough. We only have a minute or two left, Jay, and the, the last oh, item we wanted so to talk fast. about, <laughs> time goes so quickly was uh, geothermal. Uh, what's the status of this from a regulatory point of view? And you know, wh where, where does it fit you know, in all the things you're doing, especially around renewables and dealing with public opinion? Sure. Well, I think there's a few aspects to it. There, I mean, the, the, the moment the plan is offline, uh, they have an existing power purchase agreement in place. Uh, they have an application. Uh, a uh, Hawaii Electric Light Company has an application before us is part of their efforts to bring the project back online. And uh, what I can direct people to, there's been an exchange of letters that we have on our webpage. Uh, the utilities had worked out a rebuild agreement with Puna Geothermal Ventures, uh, sent it to us earlier this year, you know, making the claim that they didn't think they needed a regulatory approval. Uh, we looked at the statute and pretty clear that construction of overhead lines require approval of the commission. And there's language in, this, in there saying if it's near a residential community, it needs a hearing. Uh, so we said you need approval to rebuild the line and expect to hold a hearing uh, to support it. We also, in our letter, we highlighted uh, the importance of you know, the rebuild agreement had talked about renegotiating the existing power purchase agreement. Uh, no dollars and cents. We stated in there we think that's important and you know, hope to see that sooner than later. And it's our understanding that you know, those negotiations are underway at the moment. Uh, so I think, you know, broadly speaking, and, and uh, last year as the project went offline, it was a major concern to us also. Uh, our back of the envelope calculations showed that you know, costs are going to go up on the Big Island by burning more oil and keeping the plan online. Uh, that was a significant part of the renewable energy mix on the Big Island and statewide. And it was part of the reason you know, we had uh, tried to coordinate a response effort with Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Electric Light Company, Hawaii Electric, and Hawaii Energy, uh, which several different pieces came into place including uh, expanding the RFP to add more renew new renewable projects. Uh, you know, so I think we tried to stay on top of the loss of the plant there from early on. I was actually on the island the day the, the lava right? took over, you know, inundated the substation That's there. beyond the call, Jay. 
Oh, we had a rate case over there anyway. But, I, you know, I could see it happening and knew that, you know, this was a significant event both for folks on the Big Island and statewide. So we've tried to stay on top of it from then. But, you know, at the moment we've got, you know, a number of different pieces in place. Uh, I've, I have friends that grew up in the lower Pune area. And I'm there. So I think understanding there's different aspects of community sentiment uh, for the project. Um, but so we're uh, squarely in the middle, um, which we tend to be on all of these things. But, you know, I think we're, we will um, want to see this move forward on our watch also. Or, I mean, we have to. And, yeah. But so there'll be a hearing coming up. We don't have a time frame for that yet. And um, expect to get a, a renegotiated agreement before the commission also. A lot of meaty issues these days. Oh, too. yeah. Never a dull moment, Never but dull always moment. fun. <laughs> Marco, why don't you close? Well, so many, so many, so many, so many juicy stuff, uh, juicy things to talk about, and it seems like we just get to started and get up to full speed, and then yeah, my list was longer. I, I brought my list in here, but uh, yeah, you'll have to come back. We'll come back, and I take. Uh, I'll talk to Leo when I get back in the office. Uh, if we can get him on the show too, that'd be great. It's been a great. Oh, new that'd colleague. be great. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Jay Griffin, uh, the. Uh, Chair of the PUC, um, coming down and talking to us. We really appreciate it, Jay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Aloha. Jay. Mahalo, Nui. Aloha.